All right, so we're live. I've got a couple of things to do setup wise, but uh, as soon as some people get on, uh, we'll start into this. Pot of jam. We're making some uh, cider, my friend. Hey, thank you so much for uh, for your sub, uh, for being a subscriber and for uh, for the congratulations, man. Three hundred. I can't believe it. Um, so what I'm doing right now is uh, you're 16. Can you drink? You can drink in uh, where you're where you're at, right? You're at the legal age. Trying to win me some coins or something. That's cool. Oh, okay. So have you ever had um, Strongbow? That's a dry English cider. Have you ever had that? Um, so what I'm doing is I can't get it here. Um, they started making it. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, Strongbow is something that I like. Um, you don't think it's you don't think it's great. That's fine. Um, they they started making it here in the U.S., but what they think is that all um, people from the states like uh, sugary cider, and so what they did is they changed the recipe. So I can't get the original um, dry English cider recipe. Um, so I started cloning it. So you like. Stouford Press. I've never heard of that, so I'll have to give it a shot um, if I can find it. But anyway, what I found was I can make um, a really close clone of Strongbow by using Walmart Great Value Apple Juice and Nottingham Ale Yeast. Oh, that, yeah, that... That's no good. If it's dry or if it's if, if it's uh, warm, it's no good. You've got to have it. You've got to have it chilled. So um, I'm going to I'm going to suggest that you try it chilled because it's amazing. Someone's game in someone's game kit all day. So what do you mean by game kit? Explain what you mean. What do you mean by uh, game kit? Don't tell me you're playing airsoft. Oh, okay. Like physical education kit. So like at school or what? Explain. I'm gonna grab my uh, yeast out of the fridge. Oh. And then we'll uh, get moving here. Okay, so for school you have bags for your for your clothes. Okay, that makes sense. So you take somebody took cider to school. That's interesting. That would get you in uh, big trouble here in the states. That would get you in some big trouble here in the states. That's for sure. But things are different. Things are different from where you're from, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely not a good idea. Uh, so, a couple of things. Pot of jam. I don't know if you have ever toyed with, uh, with making alcohol. I don't know if I should even show you. <laughs> 
But um, basically, this is a sanitizer. It's called Star Sand. Um, it's an acid sanitizer for surface sanitation. Everything that you you use to make um, cider should be should be pure. So basically, you you don't want anything extra to be uh, mixed in with it. All right, so this isn't uh, this isn't going to be any new information. Stacking and prepping. What's up, my friend? I'm making some Grenadier Gold. I know you've seen the video uh, about it. Uh, got the ingredients here. Nottingham Ale Yeast is. <laughs> it was me. I said salt and pepper. Nottingham Ale Yeast uh, by Dawn Star. Uh, is the preferred um, yeast for cloning Strongbow English cider. So I'm going to use this. And, um, and I've found that the best apple juice to use is uh, Walmart brand Great Value Apple Juice. So I'm going to be using this. Now these don't come in gallon um, bottles. They come in... Uh, 2.84 liters or 96 fluid ounces, depending on where, depending on where you, uh, where you make it. So Weasel 6.3, yes, in the United States, it is legal to make your own beer. Um, whiskey and things like that, where you're distilling, you need a permit or you need, uh, you need, um, uh, a license to do it, but you do not need a license to make uh, cider or beer or wine for that matter, I believe. So uh, going through the ingredients here, I've got star sand, which is a readily available, um, a readily available uh, sanitizer and Nottingham ale yeast, which is the yeast that, um, that gives me the dry English cider style. If you change up the yeast, then you're not going to get a, uh, a Grenadier Gold clone. And then the other thing is uh, Walmart brand Great Value Apple Juice. So I'm just going to get into this. Um, Got to sanitize my funnel first. And uh, the carboy, this is a glass, six and a half uh, gallon carboy. And um, I'm going to sanitize this really quick. Sanitize my hands, sanitize this, mm -hmm. sanitize the funnel, and we'll get pouring. So, uh, I'm excited, Pot of Jam, to see you uh, hammer on that steel. So let's get into this really quick. I don't think you're going to be able to see my face. If you can, please let me know. I don't think it's going to be a problem. However, don't want to show off too much here. The nice thing about star sand here is that it's uh, it's pretty edible. So if there's anything that's inside it, it's not a problem. And I did this after the last use, but. Uh, it's a good idea to sanitize the whole thing. And it's not a problem if there's some inside it still. So I'm not worried about any residue from this star sand in here. Silver Limey, you're a mod because uh, I like you. So I use the Star Sand. This is a sanitizer. For you who don't know, uh, I'm making some cider right now. And we're live streaming it. So I've got seven bottles of the apple juice. I've got a six and a half gallon carboy. And 
we're gonna pour this in here. I don't, I gotta make it so you can see, but. So here we go with the first bottle. What I like to do is put a bottle in or two and then add the yeast. And the trick here is to not contaminate it with anything foreign. So the star sand is the cleaner, the apple juice. I'm not gonna touch the bottle to the funnel. And we'll just keep going like this. This might be actually kind of a boring live stream. I'm, I'm sorry. So Silver Limey, Grenadier Gold uh, is my clone of Strongbow's English Cider. So um, I cannot get their original recipe here in the States. The original recipe is the dry English Cider. When they started making it here in the States, they make it um, and they add a ton of sugar into the recipe because Americans love sugar, supposedly. Uh, but it totally ruins the cider for me. So I started making it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a small contingency of friends who like it. So I told them, go buy some bottles. And um, we will... Uh, keep them in the cider. So I'm going to sanitize this funnel again because I just took it out and set it on the counter. But what I need to do is add the yeast in. This is Nottingham Ale Yeast by Danstar. Um, you can get it on eBay or um, Amazon. Relatively cheap. This is uh, what I found through trial and error makes the best uh, Strongbow clone. I guess I could have sanitized my uh, knife just now, but uh, I'm not that concerned about it. Let's see if I can do this with a better angle. So dropping the yeast in, that is all of it. So now we've got, I like um, the normal Strongbow. I don't like to, change anything um, so I'm not uh, I'm not a weirdo that likes to add stuff to it I like mead but I like normal honey mead so um, there's that so anyway I've added the yeast I like to add the yeast um, after a bottle or two because then I feel like it's not just on the bottom getting uh, churned so now we're just gonna pour the rest of these bottles in. Oh, too fast. Again, being careful not to touch the bottle to the funnel. We don't want any foreign contaminants. And I have no idea who is touching these bottles at Walmart. So, Okay, so what you're saying is the actual Strongbow Berry Summer Fruits thing the thing that every girl in the world drinks at parties. I have never heard of that. Uh, here in the States, we probably are thinking that it's, uh, that it's um, more like uh, the, the Smirnoff ice or something fruity like that. Uh, the wine coolers, per se. Um, I think probably in Ireland or in uh, England, you know, they're probably a little better, uh, have better taste. So a cider probably is more popular there.
try to speed this up. I think I've only got the uh, the limeys on here now. Oh, TLT coin hunter hopped in. Kind of grim. No, it's not vodka. It's literally strongbow, but a fruit one. That's what I thought. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the here in the states is what I'm saying. Uh, the the girls drink like a a wine cooler or something like that. So. I know this isn't silver, it's more of a uh, alcohol thing, but this is kind of more on like the prepping side. You don't always want to just drink apple juice. So uh, one thing that's going to go away probably in an economic collapse or in a, um, or in a situation where you're prepping for is alcohol. Um, and that can be a, a valuable trade commodity or, or something like that. So. Uh, I like it and I drink it so I make it um, and it's kind of gold right this is the only gold that I own <laughs> other than some flakes so the last thing that you need when you are making things like this and I haven't sanitized it yet is a um, a one-way air seal um, or a bubbler I don't know the exact terminology for it, I apologize, uh, but um, what you do is you, I'll show it to you here. Um, so you got a rubber stopper that goes in the uh, mouth of the jug, and then you fill this with vodka. So uh, what happens is as the, as the uh, yeast eats the sugar in the um, apple juice, it creates a gas and the gas expands in here. And then what it does is it comes up through this pipe and builds pressure and then this part will pop, essentially allowing the air to release through these little holes here on the top. Got to sanitize this before I put it in. And I'm on my last bottle right here. As you can see, as soon as I get this bottle in and sanitize, I'll show you the final of the rest of this bottle. But cider is super easy to make. It's easier than beer. Um, this is about a two week process. After two weeks, I'll do another live stream and we'll bottle it. So you can uh, see what that process looks like. So. Got all the cider, or I got all the uh, apple juice in the carboy. And the last thing to do is sanitize this guy and we'll get him in there. I like to take this whole thing apart. I'm not afraid of using star sand because it's uh, really cheap. Also, I need to go grab a little cart for the horse here. Go grab my vodka out of the uh, liquor cabinet here. So for the vodka, it doesn't have to be anything super, super exciting. Um, this is Icelandic uh, vodka. It doesn't have to be this. It can be like some super cheap stuff. This is all that I have right now. So I'm just going to use this. Hello, that wasn't good. Can I get it out? Hello. Okay. Hopefully that... Uh... <laughs> So anyway, what we do is you just pour some vodka in here past mm -hmm. the mark. So yeah, Reka uh, Icelandic vodka. It's a small batch handcrafted in Iceland. It is uh, really good. If you can find it, 
Um, we have a store out here in the States called uh, Total Wine, and they have all kinds of cool stuff. So um, I couldn't help it. I saw this. I had to grab it. So I got this in here. The bubbler has a cap to prevent everything from coming off. And that's it, you guys. And within probably like a couple minutes, it's going to start to bubble. Um, and you'll see some action on the bubbler here. David Carlisle, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Let's see who we got on here. Pot of Jam, Silver Limey 79, David Carlisle. You know, um, I have a gravity deal that can tell me what the percentage is. Um, just guessing, I think it's probably around like eight or nine percent. Um, I don't know the science behind it yet, so I haven't really done it to figure it out. Um, I know how to make it, and that's about it. Uh, but I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's around seven or eight. So this goes for about two weeks in this ferment fermentation chamber. And then after two weeks, uh, you pull it out and um, you pull it out and bottle it. Um, so no, I think Strongbow, normal Strongbow is around there. Um, mm -hmm. Last time I checked, I could be wrong. Um, it depends on the it depends on the beer. Now that we have all these craft beers and stuff like that, the percentages are are pretty high. Um, let me show you what I've been drinking today. Okay, so I've been drinking Belching Beaver Phantom Bride, and it's a India Pale Ale, and it's seven point. Can I focus on it? Seven point ten percent alcohol by volume, and uh, uh, I've had two of these since like uh, probably like one, and I'm feeling pretty good. So, um, I could be wrong, you, you guys. I'm just guessing, seven or eight percent. Maybe, maybe it's six or five, I don't know. Uh, I could be off by a percent or so. So, I have not had Hobgoblin, and I don't know what ESB is, Pot of Jam. Explain it to me. So, anyway, this is the, that's the recipe, you guys, for Grenadier Gold, super easy to make. You could make it. Uh, you don't have to do any temperature control as long as your house is around like 74, 75 degrees. That's all you need. Um, so silver limey, this sits in the carboy for two weeks, 14 days fermenting. And um, after that, uh, you bottle it and it'll sit in a bottle um, with a, a specific amount of sugar in the bottle to create carbonation. And so the total thing takes uh, four weeks. So in one month, I'll have uh, just over five gallons of cider to drink. I'm trying to remember um, off the top of my head what the cider is I had in uh, in Ireland, um, it's got the uh, two two cider barrels on the on the image. Um, maybe you can refresh my my memory there, Silver Limey. It was available like in any pub you went into, um, and it was okay. Once you bottle it, Silver Limey, it's good forever. Um, it's good until 
the bottle goes down. So I've been using the uh, the Mr. Beer craft bottles. Um, they're plastic bottles with a uh, with a seal. They have an oxygen seal on the cap, and you just basically fill it up to there, and then uh, add the sugar in there and screw the cap on, and you're set. Um, and as long as they're kept in a, in a room temperature, uh, I don't think it's Bulmer's. Babe, do you, know, do you remember what the cider was in, in Ireland that we were having? Magners? Was it Magners? I think it was Magners, Limey. But uh, anyway, so this one, and you, if you overfill it, then um, there's a potential for the caps to fill. To fail. This bottle is my last batch of um, my last batch of Grenadier Gold. So anyway, um, you guys, you're here. Uh, there are five of you. I appreciate you guys coming on to the live stream. I hit 300 subscribers today, so that's super cool. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you um, subscribing and, and hanging out. Mass420, welcome. Um, super cool to have you guys on. Uh, so wait, there's another cider that has, well, Silver Limey, I've asked you before, but uh, I don't know if I ever got an answer because I got, uh, caught up in your uh, live streams, but what what is your go-to cider? And Potter Jam, I guess you two, you could probably answer without getting in trouble. Thank you, David. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you. Stouford Press. I think you said that. I've got to write it down so that I don't forget it. Don't know if I'll be able to get it out here, but it's worth a shot. Stouford Press and Devon Mist. And we're still waiting on Potter Jam to chime in. Or not Potter Jam. Limey to chime in on uh, on a red hobgoblin on here too. Say what? What, babe? Okay. Copperberg. I've got some homework to do. Bulmer's is a common one here, same as Magner's. Um, and Pot of Jam was ho-hum in my uh, Copperberg. That's what I wrote. I got that on there. Um, Pot of Jam was ho-hum in my, my uh, Strongbow uh, excitement. Um, Limey, have you had Strongbow before? You're fine. Go ahead. Just keep your face back. They can see your face. Here. My, my wife's beautiful face. So Strongbow, uh, I was able to get out here um, often at, at a uh, pub that I'm at, that I go to with some friends in uh, my hometown. What does my wife think of me doing YouTube? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Potter Jam. She loves it. She's so excited about me being involved in the YouTube community. 
I'm going to go in the garage for a minute, and maybe she'll tell you while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I don't care. Tell them. I'm not saying a word. Did you tell them? No. You didn't? She loves it. She's my number one fan. Uh, she's my number one fan of my YouTube channel. Um, I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube lately. And it has not gone over super well. And I'll be honest. Uh, so it's tough striking a balance. Um, so you may see slow stacker slow down quite a bit and that's okay. But um, when I get a chance, I'll hop on and uh, you know, we're not all as fortunate to have a friend a uh, a spouse excited about a uh, YouTube channel kind of like um, like stacking and prepping uh, yeah well I mean I didn't expect you to be here pot of jam and I'm surprised you know it's 11 p.m. and you have school in the morning Go to bed. I think you should probably Turn it off. <laughs> Here I am. Okay, it's uh, 2.56, it's almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. And uh, so I'm allowed to be on, I'm allowed to be on YouTube. Um, whenever I want, because I wear pants. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to, uh, Pot of jam, dude. I I, I get it. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, that was a good question. I appreciate you asking uh, about what she thinks, um, because we've had conversations about me spending too much time on it, and I have to say, you know, she is right. Uh, You're only saying that because I'm right here. No, but it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. So. Um, anyway, uh, so I wanted to get this out because it was something I needed to do. Um, she was kind enough to go by the, uh, Walmart great value apple juice for me. And, uh, she was already going to Walmart. So I said, Hey, while you're there pick up some uh, apple juice so I can make some more cider. Um, you asked, what does she think about, what does she think about uh, me stacking? Um, so uh, what does she think? She's here. So come over here, please. They want honesty, they don't want um, the answer that you should give. So go ahead and go ahead and tell them. What do you think about me stacking silver, babe? <laughs> you gotta smooch me to make it better. Um, no, I think it's pretty cool. It's not my hobby or something that I'm very interested in, but I think it's good to have separate hobbies and I get to look at some really cool coins. I don't know a whole lot because I listen and I don't necessarily learn, <laughs> but I, uh, I think it's neat that you do it. So there it is folks. It's a hobby. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it to, to preserve wealth or, um, 
to keep your family safe. <laughs> what they want to know what your yeah it does keep me out of trouble. I'm spending money on silver, not on drugs, right, guys? Right, guys? If you um, were spending money on drugs, we'd have much bigger problems. Mrs. Slow, Mrs. Stacker, gold or silver? I don't understand. Can you explain? Explain, Potter Jam. What are you asking? Gold or silver? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the eye. Is that an eye roll, silver limey? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, do you, like, you gold like gold or silver? To wear? That's a good question. Uh, to wear, um, white well, gold. white gold, let me guess, diamonds, ha ha. And well, check it out, show off, show off your ring, that's cool. What? Show your ring off. Why? Because they're asking. Because it's gold. So, so it's all about, Don't uh, look at the fingernails. <laughs> it's all about white gold, <laughs> uh, but... Um, if only that yellow, was real. Yellow gold is not, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's in very much. So, um, yeah. Silver color. Thanks, guys. I spent like three paychecks on the ring, so mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be something like that. More than that. Probably more than that. <sighs> So anyway, that's about all I've got, you guys. Unless you keep asking questions, I'll stay here answering them. <clears throat> but mostly I, I wanted to use this excuse to live stream and uh, make the cider. And I'm hoping that it starts bubbling here uh, in a minute. 18 karat gold looks n the nicest. Pure gold jewelry kind of looks like plastic. It breaks like plastic. Too. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Like this this ring that I have is white gold, and it's eighteen karat. And I, or no, it's fourteen karat gold. Um, I don't know if you can. It's only. It's only fourteen karat gold. But, uh, that means that it's uh, stronger because the other metal that's in it isn't going to allow the gold to get messed up. I don't know what yours is. is do you know 14. if it's, it's 14? Yeah. That's a typical 14. 18 karat, you get kind of closer to pure. Um, but anyway, I digress. All right, you guys, anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to uh, turn this sucker off. Nine karat bits of jewelry. Still really nice. Yeah. Uh, gold is gold is gold is gold, right? So just there's just less gold in a nine carat. But uh, it's all good. Heck yeah. Check it out. Miss Mrs. Slow Stacker is a sucker because I only got her for 14 karat gold. Right? <laughs> the table? No, we got it in the furniture store. Is that table the one over here, this this table? I wish it was solid oak. Uh, what do I think about selling some silver and buying a sovereign? Uh, uh, a, uh, a British sovereign? Um, I wouldn't mind. Um, I probably would just buy it instead of, uh, instead of selling. Uh, the silver that I have and actually uh, coming up soon. I'm gonna have uh, Around a hundred ounces of silver and I'm pretty excited about that hundred ounces um, Yeah, eventually eventually I want to buy some gold, but here's the thing so I'm I'm buying silver because silver is cheap um, And so I'm buying silver and hoping that the silver to gold ratio changes. And when it does, um, I'll probably, I'll probably end up maybe selling some silver and buying some gold. We'll see. It's mad. My 10th ounce that is around 3.1 grams of gold is around 8% of my stack. Yeah. You know, like, I could sell all my silver right now and, and get, 
an ounce of gold. And that would be cool, but then I have one. I have about 80, 83 and a half, 84 ounces right now. That's out of control. So really, is it worth it? Uh, right now, probably not. Right now, probably not worth it to, um, to do that. But we'll see, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that it won't happen when, um, when the ratio changes. Uh, I'm watching it. Uh, I'm sure you guys are probably watching it. If you're not, you should. Um, eventually, I want to get some, get some. I may sell 10 ounce, Pot of Jam says, I may sell 10-ish ounces and buy a little gold. Not sure if I want to do that before the Brexit. Or just hold, hold, hold my horses. <sighs> Limey, next time I'm in Ireland, I'm looking you up, my friend. <laughs> we, uh, we just got back uh, from Ireland three years ago. Almost four. Yeah, four years ago. It's still, it's still recent. Um, we had an awesome time. Yeah, kids will, cha kids will change you, that's for sure. But... Uh, Ireland was very fun, very fun to go to. Um, I drove, uh, I'm, I think we talked about that a little while back. Um, I stopped at the Guinness storehouse, learned to pour, pour a pint of Guinness. Um, I could always go for a Guinness. Um, but I have to tell you, Guinness here is way different from the Guinness there. So, um, Uh, pot of jam that's awesome dude 32 subs to 300 um, you guys if you're not a, a, a subscriber to pot of jam go over there check his channel out if you like his stuff give him a sub that's cool um, so I think he did a voice he wasn't doing his voice for a long time and now he, he did his voice reveal so now he's talking so content should be a little more uh, a little more exciting um, yeah, we, we, we hit the storehouse and, uh, did we, did we break our magnet already? Yeah. I really ought to get some glue and fix the, uh, fix the, <laughs> fix the magnet. Uh, I think one of the kids knocked the, the magnet off, but, um, you can't go to the storehouse and not get, uh, um, something from there. Uh, yeah, we went to St. St. James Gate, and uh, I also did uh, the Jameson factory tour, and that was pretty cool, too. If you haven't been there, they got some really cool stuff. They even had a Christmas tree made out of Jameson bottles that was pretty cool. I think there was a chandelier, too. Was there a chandelier, babe? I don't remember. She doesn't remember. It wasn't that memorable for her <laughs> she i dragged her along to the distillery and the storehouse but but what we didn't what we didn't do was uh we had the opportunity but we wanted to wait um we wanted to wait for uh a buddy of mine to show up and he was coming a day a day late so we didn't hit the storehouse with everybody. We were there actually for a wedding. And um, so we missed like the private Guinness storehouse uh, bar and, uh, and everything. So um, that was kind of a bummer, but, but it was still really cool. The other thing I did, uh, Limey, was um, I got a tour of uh, the... Peterson Pipe Factory, um, which is pretty cool. I like uh, tobacco pipes, and I have several Peterson pipes. So uh, I went, I went, and uh, and we we phoned ahead, and and were allowed to get a tour. So it was really cool. This uh, family factory. How many people do you think there were there? There were only like. Um, like 
at the most, 25 people working in this factory. Um, and uh, and uh, <laughs> it was pretty funny. So I think, uh, Pot of Jam, I think David Carlisle's messing with you. Uh, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, I don't think he's being rude. He's just playing with you, buddy. Um, Limey, have you ever have you ever heard of Peterson pipes? They're actually like pretty world famous. Um, in my pipe and cigar magazine that I get, uh, they're in there. So, um, and they're all over the place. Uh, they're they're really great. Another beautiful thing they do is they have a silversmith uh, that works at the factory, and all he does is do silver bands on um, on the uh, pipe stems. I'll be right back. Let me go grab a uh, a pipe from my office, and I'll show you. have returned. Let me set these pipes down. I grabbed six pipes. So I'm kind of a pipe collector. Um, the first pipe that I got, this is a March 17th, 2011 St. Patty's Day commemorative Peterson pipe. Um, I'm not a huge fan of I'm not a huge fan of straight pipes, but uh, this one was a gift and I can't really complain. You know, you beggars can't be choosers. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? But this one has some beautiful bird's eye. This is called bird's eye here in the briar. And then you get straight grain across the side back into some bird's eye. But the cool thing is the, the guy, I met the guy who does the silver and he does all the silver on every single pipe. So the fact that I met the dude who did this, uh, super cool. So this is a March 17, 2011, um, St. Patty's Day commemorative pipe. So that's cool. Um, this one is, I think it's the Killarney. Yeah, you were mentioning Killarney. Um, there it is right there, Killarney. Peterson pipe. Peterson of Dublin. And it's got a double silver band. And I, I'm not sure what this is here. But this is a pretty pipe. I got this one in San Diego at a pipe store. Sorry about the focus. 37. I think it says 37 on them, I'm trying here. 37 or 87 here. And then in my, uh, in my pipe magazine, I picked this one up. This is another Peterson. Shannon. And I love the grain on this, even though it's kind of off. on the side there instead of straight up and down. I mean, that's just a beautiful, beautiful grains. And more bird's eye. Oh, I forgot to mention that the pea is done in a gold leaf. Um, so I actually watched them do gold leafing on a pipe and all of that. So that was really cool. It's actually briar um, and they, they do, um, because they do so many pipes, their turnaround is so fast, they order the briar from, I believe it's Italy. So they have a company that does briar and they, f 
they do all of the um, they do all of the uh, most of the shaping, I should say, um, in Italy, and then they send them and they, they finish it up. I do every once in a while have a pipe. Um, I haven't for quite a while, but uh, <clears throat> but I do, and I, I've actually had a couple of cigars recently. But um, so this one is the one that I got in Dublin at the Peterson Pipe Factory downtown. Um, this one is 2014. Was that them? that was when we were there, right? 2014. So um, you can't tell right now because I've smoked this so much, but uh, the top of this is stained like a beautiful green. Um, if I were to clean it and then um, and then uh, buff it again, then you would see the green. Um, but really cool. So this is the same shape as this one. I like this one so much. And I don't have many rusticated pipes, so so I got this. So this is what happens when you sandblast. Um, these are the the straight grain, and it's really cool because it actually shows you how the grain was. But they do this to pipes that um, don't necessarily have like a perfect finish on them, um, and uh, yeah. David Carlisle, so do I. Um, I'm not like a huge cigar aficionado for sure, but uh, there's a store that I go to, it's called Total Wine, and you can get all kinds of um, obscure um, beers and wine and, and any kind of liquor really. And um, they have a, a pretty large humidor in there, so I go in there to, uh, to get to get cigars, and uh, I know they're not a fantastic cigar, but I really like the uh, Gurkha Royal Challenge cigar. If you haven't had those, it's a light, it's a light smoke, um, and uh, I, I enjoy those. So, um, so since we're on the pipe, yeah, ab absolutely tobacco. Since we're on the pipe tobacco uh, conversation, um, I do actually make pipe tobacco pipes. I haven't made them in probably like three or four years, but every once in a while I'll get out there and, and make one. Um, so I basically, uh, I have a couple of pipes here that, that I've made that I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, this was the first one that I made. I probably spent close to like 10 hours sanding and uh, shaping this one. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, the straight grain on this wood is phenomenal. Look how tight the grain is on it. It needs to be buffed, that's for sure. But um, there are like no, there's a couple of scratches on it. I'm not sure if that happened after I made it or if it was before and I just didn't notice it and then this one dot on here I'm not sure if that's I think it's a stain from the black but anyway yes I made this I left the top of the um, of the um, briar root there so you can you know it's kind of natural stained it red um, from a pipe kit uh, you can buy a pipe kit. It's a block of briar. And then if you buy, I did not make the stem, but if you buy, you can buy them where they have the stem already made like this. Or you can buy them without the stem finished. But anyway, I made this one. I do not have any one gram bars, my friend. I do not. So this is, uh, this is the very first pipe that I made. Um, it smokes really hot. Uh, this is very thin here. I was really careful. Um, and I did it without like power tools, really. I used a rasp and sandpaper to do this. Um, 
since then, I've moved on to using a Dremel and um, and a sanding disc and things like that. But this is a as a fun pipe to have, and I really enjoy it. Um, and I'll never sell this one. I've sold um, pipes in the past to friends and and whatnot, um, and I've given them away uh, to friends who who mean something. But um, this is another one I made a while back, uh, and I actually never pop the uh, the tobacco out of it after I smoked it but this is like kind of like a nose nose warmer it's really short um, I sell them for probably like uh, 70 US um, or so uh, I'm not looking to make any profit or anything I mean this is totally a hobby it's not a business by any means um, but my goal is to, you know, sell it to get another block of, of briar and do another one. Um, so this one I made as a project, um, and I was part of a community where you took a photo every day of the month and in the photo every day of the month, um, I let them kind of direct me the path of the pipe. So I would take, I took them through making a pipe. Uh, and I think it took like eight, eight or nine days um, to where this pipe probably only took me like four or five hours uh, as opposed to this one that took me around 10 because I wasn't using power tools and things like that. But um, I let them pick the stain. Uh, I let them pick kind of the shape I did kind of like a teardrop on this one, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of reminds me of a ship's bow, you know, when it as it's as it's going. But uh, this is my favorite one of all the pipes that I've made, and I actually only have like three or four that I've made, and I've made around like nine or ten. Um, but really happy with the way this one came out. So, uh, the, the grain on it is nice. And I actually, I actually lost this pipe. I wasn't sure where it was for, um, a couple months, probably like five or six months. I didn't know where it was. And, um, I was going through some boxes or something and I found it and I was like, oh, my heart you know because it's your fa it's when it's your favorite and you lose it in a move or something like that that's really a bummer another cool thing i think about this pipe is um it sits pretty well too so you can set it down so then you can have a drink but anyway i've got a couple of blocks um oh yeah silver limey i was totally relieved like uh, I immediately took a picture and um, and sent it to my brother, and I was like, I found it. Because uh, I don't think he knew that I had lost it, but um, but it was cool to uh, kind of relay that information. Uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's another thing. Uh, pipes are much different than uh, a cigar where... You might you might smoke a bowl of of um, tobacco in a pipe, and it might take you thirty minutes, twenty minutes, you know. And and there's no and they constantly are going out. That's another thing. They constantly go out, and so if it goes out, then you can just stop, um, or you can help it out and light it back up. So that's another thing. And then the mm -hmm. smell. Um, they smell so much better than cigars or than, uh, well, most cigars, I would say. And, and that's obviously open to interpretation, of course. But um, So you can see right here, I've got a little occlusion on the wood. Um, normally, like the Peterson factory, they drill it out and then put some filler, wood filler in there. They do not have seconds. Back into the Peterson pipe thing. Um, but uh, so they drill that out and add some wood filler on there and then 
sand it and that would and that would go out um i like a aromatic uh pipe tobacco they because they smell better so something with like um vanilla or cherry is usually good they've got some great um blends out there and then you have your non-aromatic or like your natural tobaccos that uh that don't have the added flavor and things like that. And so then in the pipe community, when you talk about that kind of stuff, you would want to smoke. Yeah, absolutely. They're definitely nice and fragrant. Um, you wouldn't want to smoke an aromatic in a pipe that you normally smoke a non-aromatic uh, tobacco in because you're mixing the two and, and it kind of messes up the pipe. Um, another thing is that they recommend you only smoke a pipe once a week. So if you have seven pipes, then you can do a pipe, a pipe a day. But the idea behind that is that you let the pipe um, cool off and dry out before you use it again. Um, because if you don't, then uh, the pipe wears a lot quicker. Alcohol, tobacco, all we need is some firearms. All we need are some firearms in here, and we can have the ATF on my case. <laughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. I, I got my wife to laugh at least, and, and Silver Limey, and Pot of Jam. Okay, it was worth it. What else, you guys? I got somebody else popping on here. Who just came on? Hey, Silver Limey, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, tell Sal I said hi. Hi, Sal. Uncle Sal, I'll slurp my beer for you. Silver Grandma, welcome, welcome, welcome. Silver Limey, hey, I appreciate you, buddy. You have a good evening. We'll catch you later. Um, Silver Grandma, welcome. Uh, in this stream earlier, I made some cider, it should start to ferment here. Did I throw away? I threw away the cider. Um, then the yeast, but uh, if you go back after and, and watch, I take you through the recipe of the cider that I like. Um, and then we started talking about tobacco pipes uh, because I don't know why. I can't remember. Somebody asked me if I smoke cigars. Um, you make fermented red vegetables. That sounds amazing. What kind of vegetables? What kind of vegetables do you use, Silver Grandma? Silver Granny? I got to know. Red veggies, like if you like Dior cabbage and green beans. Sour, sour. Oh, David, did you say you're taking off? I don't think he's leaving Pot of Jam, but maybe he is. Um, cabbage and green beans, fermented cabbage and green beans. I can't say that I like them. I can't say uh, anything about them other than cabbage and green beans are delicious. So fermented cabbage and green beans would be amazing. David Carlisle, I appreciate you coming by, buddy. Thanks for stopping by and being a uh, subscriber and hanging out, man. I appreciate you. Catch you later. So anyway, pipes and alcohol, pot of jam, you asked me about guns, I have quite a few, yeah, I totally do uh, bottle my cider, I bottle it in bottles just like this, this is a bottle of 
um, Grenadier Gold right here. I was using swing top bottles, but I found that they don't um, they don't keep the the gas in there, so they don't carbonate. Um, and so after four weeks of of uh, work or waiting, I should say, they are not worth not worth it. Um, I've toyed with it. I've toyed with making labels and things like that, but uh, the cost really isn't. Um, isn't worth it. Silver Grandma. So it goes in this fermentation chamber. It's called a carboy with an air seal um, for two weeks at like 74, 78 degrees. After that, it's done fermenting in this. So the yeast has eaten all the sugar. And then at around four or around two weeks, the yeast is going to start eating itself um, because it's an it's a organism that's living. So then what you do is you take it out of here and you put it into bottles. And in the bottle, you, you fill it up to around here, whoop, around here, and then uh, add some sugar in there. And after you add some sugar in there, you seal it off. And what it does is um, the yeast, while it's eating the sugar, it's consuming the sugar in the apple juice, it creates alcohol. So it also creates a gas and the gas expands. So what this, the purpose of the airlock is, is to not allow air in, it just lets the gas out. So when you put it in the bottle, and you add the sugar in, it carbonates. So, um, so that's how you get a carbonation in um, in a, a cider or a beer. Same thing. Um, I have actually uh, the last batch that I did um, that I traded the Morgan for, or I'm sorry, that I was traded the Morgan for was um, 24 bottles in little glass bottles um, that I bottle capped, actual caps. So um, my friend took that to Wasteland Weekend, which is kind of like a Mad Max weekend, Friday to Monday or something like that. And they're all like post-apocalyptic costumes, kind of like a Renaissance fair, but more of a, um, more of like a, um, well, just like a Renaissance fair, but just post-apocalyptic themed. Um, so he took those and then he, he used them as barter and as gifts to friends. And I got silver out of it. So that's cool. He actually owes me the bottles. So, um, if you're watching, I want my bottles back, <laughs> but, um, it was, a uh, it was a little bit of a loss for me. Uh, it costs, it costs probably, I can't remember how much I spent on the bottles. I think it was around $50 on the bottles, the glass bottles alone. And then what, how much was the cider? Do you remember? Or the apple juice? Me? Yeah. I think I it's like, know. I didn't look. I think um, the bottles of apple juice are like three or $4 I just, yeah. a piece. So you got, you got seven of them. Maybe a little less because it's Walmart brand. You got seven of them at like three dollars, so twenty-one, so seventy dollars, and I got uh, a Morgan out of it. So I think he owes me a little bit more, but I'm not asking him for it because he's my friend, and it was fun to make the cider and and then and then provide the joy. So. Uh, That's too much. <clears throat> Anyway, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop off here. Oh, Welcome back, Potter Jam. Oh, Silver Grandma, it's not a big deal. So this guy that I traded the the cider for the uh, for the glass uh, or the cider for the Morgan. I mean, I got a Morgan Silver Dollar out of it, and he's he's part of my like really close 
knit friendship group. So, I mean, just, I gave him, I gave him some cider and it's not a big deal. Um, I have the utmost respect for him. He's a great friend and uh, I would do it again over and over again for him if that were the case. So I'm definitely not frowning over that, uh, over that deal. Um, I got, I got a, I got a silver Morgan out of him and his wife actually was like, what? You traded a Morgan for cider? So she was kind of upset, but I'll do it again. And I don't know if he'll do it again, but he probably would. Maybe not now that he, if he can watch this, he'll have the recipe. He could just make it himself. Pot of jam, where did you go? Why are you leaving me? <laughs> the video's been over an hour. I did a uh, DD prepper, doomsday prepper. I got it. Uh, I did get some, uh, I did get some silver. Um, I did a, a Christmas gift order and piggybacked some uh, constitutional on it. So I'll have a video about that when I get it back. Um, I need to spend some time on your channel, my friend. Uh, I apologize for not being there. Um, so I will uh, get on there and I'll drop you some likes and some comments for sure. Wow, 41 ounces, man. So, so I'm slow stacker. I am stacking it slow. Um, and the idea behind my name is that I stacking on a budget. Um, yeah. Uh, we're doing a, um, a baby shower here at the house and my wife, why not? Oh, so what? So she just did this chalkboard and she's like, don't show the name. I'll show the name, but who cares? There's the name. She did a beautiful job on the chalkboard. Press one if you think she did a beautiful job on the chalkboard. Um, so I'll, yeah, so I'm stacking on, uh, I got ones over here, baby. You did a great job, a beautiful job on the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so, everybody. So basically I'm, um, I'm stacking it slow, and the reason is because I'm stacking on a budget, and I can't just spend tons of money on my silver. So I've got, I've got probably 84 ounces, and that's including like the constitutional silver count, where you figure out how much silver is an ounce. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about. Um, getting my 100 ounces that will happen next year <laughs> but uh that's okay um it's not about uh for me having tons of silver like some of these guys you watch their full stack video and it's like out of control like did any of you guys see international stackers full stack video where he has where he has like over his weight in silver um, it's like out of control. And can you, wait a second. There, woo, I almost lost you. That was crazy. Um, who do I still have on here? I'm sorry. <laughs> it could be over. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, it's been over an hour. So, um, anyway, you guys that are here, who's here? I got... It's okay. Who, who do I have here? I still got two watchers.
I don't know who's here still. Pot of jam. Pot of jam, are you there? What? Oh. <laughs> Doomsday prepper. Yeah, buddy. So, um, I'm going to spend some time on your channel for sure. I'm going to go check you out. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm subscribed to you, but if I'm not, I will be shortly. And, uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate you showing up and checking out, uh, the, the channel and, um, and whatnot. And now you have the recipe for some cider. There's all kinds of easy, easy alcoholic beverages you can make. If that's the case, pot of jam, my man. Um, I don't know if we are actually fermenting yet. Got to watch these bubbles here to see. I haven't seen anything pop up yet. But in the next like 30, 40 minutes, it probably will. Um, yeah, that's actually from when the bubbles are from when I initially made it. So it just takes a little bit of time and then and then it'll start to start. So hey, you guys, Doomsday Prepper and Pot of Jam and whoever just hopped on. It's been an hour and 18 minutes of me monologuing, which may be amazing, but also maybe like super lame. <laughs> But uh, I appreciate you guys. And uh, who just hopped on? Uh, send me a comment so I can see. That was probably really annoying, sorry. So I've got some um, silver eagles in the mail coming and some constitutional silver and some uh, capsules for the silver eagles because they are uh, they are a gift. So I don't want to give them something that um, Another thing is uh, I don't want them to get um, tarnished and whatnot for the gift, so. Mm. I'll check, uh, I'll check it. Thank you for, mm. uh, for mentioning mm. it, Pot of Jam. Um, lots of people going live right now. Um, I was trying to be behind my camera, but maybe maybe you saw my face, and my beautiful beard. I don't know. I don't know what I said. I don't know anymore. However, my phone is blowing up. People messaging me, calling me, and whatnot. Oh, I do. I have a beautiful manly beard at this time. Mm -hmm. I don't usually get to have a beard, uh, but since I've been off of work, I'm growing it. I did a no-shave November, for sure. Started a little early, and it's been fun. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, that's all I got. I'm out of here. This is a slow stacker. I'm stacking it slow. If you like this video, comment, subscribe, drop a like. I appreciate it. I know it's been really long. I don't expect everybody to watch everything, obviously. Um, 
But for those of you that do, huh, man, you guys are great. Thank you so much, Pot of Jam, for hanging out with me. I'll catch you on the next one. Stacking it slow. Later on, buddy.